Okay, so uh, while our judges join us on stage, I will do a real, just a real quick run through of how this is gonna work. Um, so we had 450-ish companies apply to be here. There have been 13 presentations over the past two days. And from those 13 companies, we have chosen four who are gonna present for you right now. Um, they're gonna get six minutes to present. They're gonna have six minutes for Q&A. And then we're gonna go backstage and choose a finalist who will get $50,000 and custody of a trophy called the Metal Man. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Of course, key part of the process are our judges. Um, so let me just introduce them very quickly. First, we have Helen Grainer, founder and CTO of Sci-Fi Works, a company that acts as a skunk works to design and deliver innovative robots. She previously co-founded iRobot, the company behind the Roomba in 1990. Michelle Cayley, you will probably recognize from a couple of days ago on our stage. She's the director of the United States Patent and Trademark Office and Undersecretary of Commerce for Intellectual Property. She serves as a principal advisor to the president through the Secretary of Commerce on both domestic and international intellectual property matters. Next, you will also recognize Wendell Brooks, president of Intel Capital. That's Intel's global investment organization, which makes equity investments in innovative technology startups oh. and companies worldwide in support of Intel's CEO, strategic now objectives. Intel Capital He's guy. also responsible for Intel's mergers we and acquisition like, strategy and execution. Last, and this time I would say least, is Matt Burns, a senior editor at TechCrunch. He's been in charge of pulling together everything you've seen on stage for the past few days, and he likes tacos <laughs> and Michigan. Right? That's fair. Uh, all right, so that is it. Let's start our presentations. First up, we have Bloom Life. Presenting for Bloom Life is founder and CEO Eric D. Take it away. All right. All right. So, there's one thing all of us here have in common. We all have a mom. And while it's known that the period from conception through the first thousand days of life are the most important for setting the trajectory of lifelong health and development for a child, we are failing women and babies at this time. Over the past several decades, pregnancy complications have been on the rise. Diseases such as gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, and preterm birth are global epidemics that not only cost our healthcare system billions of dollars annually, but often leave women and children with a lifetime of disability and chronic disease. For expecting moms, the road to motherhood is often filled with uncertainty and lots of questions. For many women, the only time there's any sort of peace of mind is during their prenatal checkups. But these trips are inconvenient, expensive, and ultimately limited by 50-year-old technology, thus leaving women with many unanswered questions. My name is Eric D. I'm co-founder and CEO of Bloom Life, and we're here to change this. At Bloom Life, we are designing the future of prenatal care with technology designed to improve the health of moms and babies. We combine wearable devices with data analytics to both reassure expecting moms and provide doctors with better information to improve birth outcomes. This is not another gadget, but rather an accurate and reliable medical-grade product that is both convenient and easy to use, as my colleague Nicole is about to show you. For expecting moms, Bloom Life takes the guesswork out of pregnancy and puts need-to-know information about her body and her baby at her fingertips. So as you can see, McCall, uh, she's been wearing a sensor now for a little bit, so we have some data to show you. But if you could switch to the front camera here, to illustrate how easy it is to use, she's going to put one on. To use, a mom simply snaps the sensor into the patch and then applies the patch to the belly. Snap it all the way in. So how does Bloom Life work? So if we go back to the slides, please. So Bloom Life works by measuring biopotentials in motion. The mom's heart's a muscle, the baby's heart's a muscle, and the uterus is a muscle. Can you please switch back to the slides? Slides. Mom's heart's a muscle, the baby's heart's a muscle, and the uterus is a muscle. Each create a unique electrical signal, which we can non-invasively measure through, which we can non-invasively measure through the, through the sensor. The complex hardware and software co-engineering that needs to, that's needed to pull this off is extremely challenging. However, our team has over a decade experience developing similar systems for market leaders in cardiac and brain monitoring. So we please switch to the app view. So as you see, McCall is in her thri third trimester, looking radiant. Um, and so for expecting moms right now, contractions and labor are top of mind for her. So what Bloom Life does, it provides her a validated second opinion on what she might be feeling 
provide her some peace of mind and provide her the critical information that a doctor will want to know to more easily communicate between uh, McCall and her care team. So, <laughs> on the bottom there, bottom left. A lot of you wishing us good luck here. <laughs> so, through the app, McCall is able to see real-time uterine activity to confirm the feeling, whether or not that ping she's feeling is a contraction or nothing to be worried about. So you can scroll through there, you can see real-time immune activity. If she has a contraction, she can easily see that and also see what the duration of that contraction is. Above that, we also showed the contraction pattern. This is important for McCall to see whether or not the contraction is getting regular or just sporadic, which helps you know whether or not they're just a body preparing for labor or perhaps whether or not she's in labor. And lastly, above, we calculate the stats automatically for her. Frequency and duration. These are two critical pieces of information that if McCall called her doctor to think she might be in labor, that he would ask her to report. If we switch to the trends view, what we're also able to provide with regular use is how McCall's body is preparing for labor. This gives her confidence that everything is going along according to plan and that she's getting ready for the big day. Can you please switch back to the slides? So beyond contractions where we start today, our amazing lightweight medical grade sensor can measure some of the most important health parameters of mom and baby from conception to birth. This includes pregnancy specific information no other wearable can track today such as fetal movement and fetal heart rate. This is a huge step forward. Existing solutions don't track anything about the health of the mom and are neither safe nor convenient for continuous use. And emerging solutions only track individual parameters of mom or baby. All of these features will be made available via over-the-air software updates. No additional hardware changes are necessary. Our product has been validated in four clinical studies and we've been shipping to beta moms over 500 moms throughout the US. The feedback has been overwhelming. Moms have been sharing stories of how Bloom Life provided them peace of mind and helped them more easily connect with their body during this critical period of time of their life. It's clear we're tapping into a passionate and engaged group that has been overlooked for way too long. We will first launch Bloom Life direct-to-consumer via a monthly subscription. With the subscription, moms receive the reusable sensor and all the disposable patches. After having her baby, she could easily return the sensor to us. As we further, further build our user base, and to further establish trust and credibility, we will scale sales via mom-to-mom -mom referrals and channel partnerships. Upon securing FDA clearance, we will seek reimbursement. Our goal is for Bloom Life to become standard of care, fully reimbursed, and utilized by doctors everywhere to better track and manage the health of their moms. Now, there's one last thing I'd like to leave you with, and this is the part that gets our team most excited. In partnership with the Bloom Life community of moms, we have an opportunity to crowdsource the largest and most comprehensive data set on maternal and fetal health ever collected. This is game changing. This critical data that has been impossible to capture until now will help power our cloud-based machine learning analytics to help doctors better predict and manage pregnancy complications before it's too late. Wrap it in, su up. In, in support of this mission, we've already built partnerships with four of the top cl leading clinical research centers globally. And we've, published five of our paper, we've already published five papers in the top medical conferences for OBGYNs. At Bloom Life, the role that technology can play in changing our lives is all around us. At Bloom Life, we believe it's time, it's time to start applying that technology to where it matters most, saving millions of families from the heartache of a lost child and making more healthy babies in this world. So join the prenatal health revolution, spread the word about Bloom Life, and if you or anyone you know is expecting, visit us at bloomlife.com to reserve today. Thank you. All right, judges, who has questions for Bloom Life? Eric, can you spend a minute uh, helping us understand your revenue model? So initially, we're launching direct consumers, so it's a monthly subscription. So we're charging anywhere between $50 to $149 per month. And what they receive is the reusable sensor and then the disposable patches. And after the mom's <coughs> had her baby, she could return the sensor to us, and then we essentially refurb, and we could ship it off to another mom. That's where we're starting today. And what is the cost basis of that sensor? Uh, so we're not to closing right. our unit economics Fair at enough. this point. What, Eric, why did you choose that model? So uh, it started off because we only had 10 units. And we, if we sold them to a mom after she had the baby, then we're not collecting any more information. Um, so we started just saying, let's rent it. And then women organically responded through us to say they actually enjoyed that because they felt like it wasn't as wasteful. After they've had their baby, they could just return it and they know another mom could use it. So that's kind of where we settled on. What are you seeing on the competitive landscape? Anything close to what you're doing? Who are your competitors? So, um, in this space, there's, there's two categories. There's medical devices, and then there's more of the consumer gadgets. 
Um, within the medical device category, um, there is, uh, it's usually the antiquated technology that's out there. There's a few that are trying to approach this with a more electrical-based approach that we're using. On the consumer side, there's a few companies that are kind of coming out. Um, one of them's down in Eureka Park. Uh, so there's Tiny Kicks down there. There's another company out of Israel called Nuvo Group. It's, it's a slowly developing area, but it's, it's starting to pick up speed. And I think the increased visibility we're getting, especially here at CS, I think is going to further accelerate that. Have you filed for your patents? Yes, we have. So we could talk about that. Maybe you could accelerate some things. Um, so we, have, we actually have 10 patents already filed covering the core building blocks of the technology, covering everything from the sensor architecture um, through the cloud analytics. Um, as we kept all of our signal processing algorithms uh, trade secrets since it's much harder to figure out whether or not people are actually violating those. I guess, uh, what, kind of sensor, what kind of sensor are you using and does it matter where, what orientation and does it depend on where the baby's sitting? Right. And also, how much would a mom expect to pay through her pregnancy for this service? So there's two main sensing elements that we have. One is an ultra-low power analog front end that's measuring biopotentials and we also use an accelerometer. And through those six channels of input, there's a lot that we could extract from there. Um, in terms of um, how, uh, the second question was how much. How, how, how much would a mom expect to pay through her entire pregnancy? So right now, the product's specifically designed for contractions. So it's anywhere between um, $149 to $300 for the full third trimester, uh, depending upon the length of the rental. We are releasing, we're right now validating the next feature, which would be fetal movement. That should be available later this year, and then it goes from something that's good for the third trimester, trimester into the second trimester. And did you say you had FDA approval for this already? So, so we, um, we spent a lot of time working with the regulatory experts to sort of plot out our path through the FDA. Essentially, we're, la we're launching with a, 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 a product with a reduced feature set to be able to launch direct to consumer that w without uh, regulatory clearance. Um, we've already designed the product to medical standards. We run all the clinical studies to benchmark the performance of the system against what's used in the hospital, and we look to, uh, to seek uh, FDA clearance later this year. Is it comfy to wear? You have two of them on. You can't even fill it. It's great. <laughs> Super great. Uh, who owns the data that's being accumulated? In, is it on your device? Does it go to the medical establishment? Or do you keep your own data? Sure. So our core belief, and this is something we thought about a lot when we were founding the company, is that um, a user should own their data. And they have the right to decide what we do with it or what we don't do with it. And so everything becomes opt-in for the data sharing. Ultimately, if they do decide to share their data, then we will keep a copy of that anonymized. And that's the data that we're working with these clinical research centers to start interrogating this data to really understand, are there indicators in here of, of labor, of early labor, of pregnancy complications? That's, that's ultimately the goal. When do you expect the FDA clearance to go through? Well, um, we can file. The, our first filing would be uh, a class two medical device with a 510K uh, submission process. So. From the time you file, you have nine months before they have to have a response. So hopefully within nine months to a year of your initial filing. So what was the inspiration for this? How did you come up with this idea for this company? So um, the team had been working in advanced wearables um, at a, at a Belgian-based company called IMEC for, for a number of years, for over a decade. And uh, my co-founder's wife got pregnant with their first child. All of my friends were having kids. We sort of saw that this is a period of time in, in a couple's life when it's just transformative. And there's so many question concerns that pop up. And the motivation for having a baby and for having a healthy baby is so high that we saw it was just a really unique opportunity to both answer the question concerns that parents had that were difficult for them to answer today. And where on the healthcare side, there was so many, there's so many unknowns about pregnancy that we felt was ultimately limited by data. And the data was not there because there wasn't technology. And with the emergence of everything that's going on here at CES, the technology is finally there. And so we sought out to, um, to address that problem. You said you had 500 beta units out of over 500. Over 500. How many of those units, how many times did the, the female stop using them all the way through? Or I guess a better question, how many times did they use them all the way through? Yeah, so um, if we're looking at churn, we, we, we track that. So we were looking at um, what is churn, and churn for us is if, if someone returns the system before they have their baby. That's for us as a lost customer. Right, n right now, our churn is under 8%. The other question is, for siblings, how many people are using it for first pregnancy and then second pregnancy? Yeah, so that was something actually that, that's, yeah, the calls in her second pregnancy. So that was actually something that really surprised us. We figured this would be for a lot of first time moms and then maybe high risk moms. And we've seen our user base is much more broad than that. We've had everyone from a first time to a six time mom use the product. Um, and for a lot of women, again, it's just like each pregnancy is different. And there was a lot of uncertainty. And some women had really fast labors, they didn't know they were in labor. And so um, it's a much broader uh, audience than we originally thought there would be. All right, we are out of time, so give it up one more time for Bloom Life. All right, so our second company is gonna come to the stage and get set up. Uh, while they're doing that, I would love to hear from our judges. What did you think? 
Matt, you want to go first? I offered to let them try it on me, on my big belly. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I had to shave some hair, so we didn't do that. I'm, go ahead, yeah. I'm glad to offer a thought here. I like the notion that I don't have to time and duration of contractions. That, that's nice, especially towards the end, right? Do I need to go to the hospital now? Do I need to wait? Are you, um, is, is that enough to make you wear it sort of you know, completely through the third trimester? So I guess I have a question is like, when would I start to put it on and when would I take it off? I mean, clearly after the baby's delivered, take it off, but sort of toward the end there, right? I mean, when do you begin and when do you engage your subscription? And I'd be interesting to see kind of when, when their users decide to take it up and use it. But, but even, if, even if a mom just wore it when they, uh, when they needed it, it's still a win for the company. And, um, you know, I think uh, healthcare for pregnant women, it's, it's something that uh, people, like women are adopting more and more technology, uh, you know, about their specific concerns. So I think that that will help this business forward. Wendell, what did you think? Look, I think it was a great concept. Um, I think sensors are going to be used for all kinds of incremental healthcare opportunities, and this is one. And we, we see a lot at Intel Capital. Um, this is something that I, I, I'd be interested in funding from my other hat, so. <laughs> That's a good sign. 